Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Floating Sargassum in the Caribbean. We're joined today with Paola Diaz. She is a Honduran biologist currently doing her master's degrees in Costa Rica, where she's studying the spatial variability of stable isotopes of algae and parrotfish as a tool for identifying foraging habitats. She is also co-leading a research investigation at Centro de Investigaciones en Ciencias del Mar y Limnología at the University of Costa Rica, where she's studying the, the situation of floating sargassum in the Caribbean coast of Central America. And today she's gonna talk about um, sargassum as you guys might have seen in the news or if you live in sargassum near the island, right? So in this webinar, you're gonna learn what, what sargassum is and the impact it has. So hi, Paola. Hi, hello everyone. Can you hear me? And can you yes, hear me? we can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Perfect. All right. So okay. Let's start. let's start. Hello everyone. As I told as Sara told you, I'm Paula Diaz. I'm from Honduras. But now I'm living in Costa Rica and I'm a part of this project that is related with the fluorine sargassum that is arriving in Central America. I imagine that most of you are know or seen this algae in on the sea. So let's talk more about this algae and the importance that this algae has. So sargasso. Sargasso is a brown macroalgae that belongs to the order of Ocales, to the kingdom Chromista. There are two important groups of these algae, the bentonic uh, sargasso, that is the sargasso do, we, that we saw when we are diving and we are doing snorkeling and is attached to a substrate. But it, there's a lot of group that is the pelagic, most known as a fluorine sargasso. The fluorine sargasso, complete all day, or all day life cycle uh, drifting on the sea. They never attach to a substrate. But both of them provide a um, habitat uh, feeding and refuge to a lot of, uh, to a many different species. So they um, convert to a very important ecosystem. It is also an efficient carbon sink because they absorb a lot of CO2 and they are recognized by, by the air systems. I don't know if you remember when you saw sargassum that you can see the small balls that look like grapes. These are gas filled bladers that help the sargasso to flow. So this helps the sargasso to move uh, along the sea and also to the bentonic species help when the, when the algae dies, um, they, they feel this. Um, these aerosids and they can go to the surface. So what I'm talking about the fluorine sargassum, the fluorine sargassum is an interesting, a very, very interesting group. And also this group of algae for an important worldwide ecosystem known as Sargasso Sea. Sargasso Sea was first recognized by Portuguese fishermen, but uh, Cristobal Colón was the first person to describe this uh, sargasso. They thought that maybe sargasso uh, for the for the wind or for some currents uh, the attached sargasso uh, goes to the surface and comes to this area. But they, with the time and more research, they know that this is this was this this was a very uh, different type of sargasso that flow. They always flow on the surface. The sargasso sea is not only important and consistent in the biological way. Is also very important in the economic way because this is a, a place for a for a very important fishing point. So this area is very uh, economic, very sorry, a very economic uh, important area. And uh, they also not only extract animals, they also extract the sargasso because sargasso is used for as a fertilizer and to feed animals. So there are some movements that start uh, some initiatives to protect this area because 
it's really important. Uh, the refugees that these area gates are very important. There are some species that complete the life cycle. There, there are species that also endemic for this area. So Sargasso Sea are very, very important. But what is happening with the Sargasso, that Sargasso from the Sargasso Sea arriving to the coast? Well, the algae uh, has three uh, important sources to fructificate. The quantity of CO2, high temperatures, and nutrients. These three helps to the algae to fructificate and reproduce. And as we know, in the last decades, these three components are present in our ocean in high quantities. So that is one of the import, very big um, hypothesis what sargassum is arriving here in that quantity. Also, uh, the changes of the currents related with climate change uh, brings the alga and change the root of the alga and bring it here. <clears throat> so as we saw, uh, there's a huge problem that sargasso is telling us because in, in past years, uh, sargasso came to our coast, but knowing that quantity. Also, sargasso uh, brings a lot of nutrients, uh, gives a lot of refugees for a lot of organisms. And when they come to the beaches, they help to avoid erosion of the beaches. The problem now is the quantity. So this is what is happening. The sargasso sea, as you see, is here in the North Atlantic. But now uh, there are another important point here that is called the small sargasso that is more on the south. And also the nutrients that comes from the deposited by the river, the Amazon River gave the nutrients that, that help sargasso to fructificate. So all this quantity from the sargasso sea and this small sargasso sea here in the south come to all of the coast. And we don't have, I think that it's important not only say that the nutrients for the Amazon River. As you know, there's a lot of deposition of nutrients along our coast. So they're not only the problem. As we know, we all depositate all the nutrients in all along the coast. So what is happening with that huge quantity of sargasso arrives and start uh, the data composition on the beach. There are a lot of ecosystem services that are affected, uh, the provision ones, fisheries and tourism. And with, as you saw in this photo, there's a, it's, it's amazing the quantity of sargassum that comes here. And there's a lot of mortality of fauna. So that affects the, fish, the fisheries. Also when the Fishers wants to go and work and do the work day. Um, they are affected for this algae because they can go on their boat because there's a lot of algae and they can go or they have to uh, give more effort to complete the day. Uh, also for that days, there were 60% losses in tourism because a lot of tourism does, doesn't want to swing and on that beaches. The, the services of regulation of environment and health, uh, there are some studies that reveal the metal, um, the metal con the heavy metal content of sargasso. Sargasso has the capacity to absorb a lot of quantity. That means that sargasso is cleaning our oceans. But the problem is when sargassum arrive to our coast and start the process of this composition. So we can saw here as in this image that mortality of fauna related to this. So the, the sargassum start the composition and also the sargassum that is alive and cover all the surface and that avoid the penetration penetration, sorry, of the lights. So as we know of the coastal ecosystem needs life to survive and to continue their the, the dynamic, right? And there's a lot of different elements related with the decomposition that uh, 
that provoke the, the death of a lot of organisms. So for the culture of scenic beauty, we have to talk, think about the communities. Uh, for the communities, uh, there's a lot of affections for the tourism, as I told you, because there's the people don't want to be there. Also, the people from the communities don't want to be there because of the sensation on, on the skin of the sargassum. Uh, also, in the support, you, as we know, the marine dynamics gave all the support of a lot of animals and a lot of organisms. For example, the sea, uh, the seagrass. The seagrass are an ecosystem, are an ecosystem very important for nurseries for uh, provide food to a lot of organisms. And what, what is happening here when the sargassum start to die, they sink into the seabed and start that process of decomposition. And at the end can kill all this, all this ecosystem for that reason. And also a lot of, um, a lot of sargassum on this area is there um, a lot of absorption of oxygen. So the levels of oxygen start, start to drop. And that's what it causes a lot of mortality of fishes. Also, uh, Gavio, an um, investigator, uh, start to show how sargassum were affecting the sea turtles. In the process, when a sea turtle goes to spawning, uh, the sea turtle can enter to the beach and do the process. But when they were in sargassum, the turtle um, can spawn, but then when the egg born, the, sea, the small sea turtle, you know, has to return to the sea. And there were a lot of sea turtle, baby sea turtle that were and death in all this net of sargassum. So as you saw, there's the affection of this phenomena is not, is not only economic and social, it's also for our ecosystem and for our environment. So there's a lot of associated fauna, not only uh, turtles and fishers, there are also crustaceans, echinoderms, mollusks, and polychaetes that are um, affected for these uh, mortalities and for these phenomena. So in general, uh, the, this phenomena uh, start in 2011 in Mexico and in some uh, Caribbean islands. And this, since that day, there's that a lot of research related to that because no one knows about this, that was really new, as I told you. Uh, some years, Sargasso came, but it wasn't a problem, but in this quantity, it start to, um, to affect a lot of uh, sectors as fishermen, uh, tourism, community, and also the government um, uh, start to worry about because the economic part was affected. As you know, most of the coastal communities on the Caribbean depends of tourism. So there's a outlook bulletin that can predict, not predict, but can uh, show us the uh, sargasso that is coming. So we can calcu calculate when sargasso is going to reach the coast. But the problem with this is this is a, in a, a big scale. And some places, are sargassum, but this map for the resolution, we can see it. So that uh, problem happening happened in Florida. And that's why I'm a student, a PhD student, start a project with citizen science and develop a project, a project in this uh, application that is called EpiCollect 5. So in this application, all the people, all the collaborators, can um, upload photos and information of the sites where sargassum were arriving. And in that way, we can connect the information for the outlook bulletin that is developed by the NOAA and this, um, and this the information from this application. So these places that 
we don't saw sargassum on the map. Now we are, now all the people know that in reality sargassum is arriving. And that's the problem with Central America. We saw the mass arrival of sargassum is most, is most common to, to uh, in sorry in the in the North Caribbean, right? Like Mexico in, and all the places that I told you. And that's why there have some research and also management proposal that people start collecting the sargassum. They sometimes make some mistakes, but that now they understand how to do it in a right way and not affecting uh, the marine organisms. But what is happening in Central America? In Central America, it's a rel relative a new event because we start receiving information of this event since 2019 and also for this year as you know i think most of you are uh, live in Roatan. i don't know but i uh, imagine that you are very related with this phenomenon now but we don't see that images on the outlook bulletin so that's why we start doing a, a initiative to start collecting and documenting the information of sargassum that is arriving here. Uh, we are starting to document in this and we have information from Costa Rica, from Honduras and Nicaragua. And we also start contacting, contacting people from Belize. From Belize and we know that there's some initiatives for, uh, of management. Uh, Guatemala, we don't know, uh, we don't have uh, information. For Panama, we have contacts. But the people are telling us that sargassum is not arriving. And Nicaragua, we don't have too many uh, contacts. So this is the map until the day. And as you saw, there's a lot of points in Honduras. Uh, we have information since La, La Mosquitia. From La Mosquitia, we have an event from 2014. We also have in Puerto Cortez, Vela, and in all the island that has been more affected for this event. Uh, as a part of the, of the laboratory of ecology, we have some uh, objectives for, for this uh, project and some are more academic. So we are um, in charge of the ecological and taxonomic research. We are collecting sargasso. We are doing monitoring on the beaches. Uh, obtaining information of the coverage, coverage of the sargassum and also the level of sargassum that is arriving. We are creating leaks with coastal communities and the government. And also uh, by the date, we, have, we, we are part of the commission of sargassum. And there's a different sectors that work with that. Some people are, do, are documenting, uh, us as uh, Universidad de Costa Rica are doing more this, uh, more the biological research. Also, there's a student that he's making her his thesis related with the heavy metal context. In that way, uh, we can start getting uh, some recommendation how to use sargassum because sargassum, as I told you, are very efficient for fertilizer and also for feeding animals. And as a primary um, project, we are documenting the arrival of sargassum in all Central America. So until now, we are still doing the analysis. Uh, we identified three morphotypes that are the most common morphotypes of sargassum that are arriving to the coast. And we are creating links with communities. There are also in this, in this commission, there are people from the Association of Fisheries. There's a lot of fishermen that are sending us photos for this, and we are documenting that information. Also for Honduras, it's a good news that there start um, organization and there are working on create these groups, these different groups to start uh, giving more, uh, giving proposal uh, for the management of this phenomenon. So these are some photos that we are receiving from our collaborators. 
Uh, these are from Roatan, Honduras. Uh, this one are from 2021. And it's very interesting because in 2021 in Costa Rica, we didn't have sargasso. But for Roatan, I received a lot of pictures, not in the quantity of this year, but I, I received some places that photos for, from some places that there were a lot of sargasso. So something that is very important to incorporate is start to making this oceanographic analysis uh, to understand what is happening, why sargassum is arriving now, and why in the past year didn't arrive. Uh, these are from Guanaja, uh, Utila. In this day, Utila has a lot of quantity. Also, this is this is a small quantity uh, related with the photos that I received yesterday. Uh, Core Island in Nicaragua, uh, Costa Rica. And when, well, for looking forward, we are doing that metal analysis. We are identification of morphotypes. Uh, we already identified the morphotype from Costa Rica. So we are asking or encourage the collaborators to send us photo uh, to the to the uh, different materials that they collect and in that way we can identify which morphotypes are arriving um, also uh, we are with that information we can gain more valuable information how to use this sargasso uh, we are organizing workshops for the use of EpiCollect 5 and moni for monitoring uh, the arrival of sargassum. We are organizing this time of events, informative webinars, and also we are starting to uh, organize a, 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 a webinar with the fishermen and the other sectors that are uh, affected for this event. And we are writing a publication to documenting in our official way the arrival of sarcasm in Central America. So the important aspect to consider, if you can help us to contact more collaborating people for all this country, include all the sectors, uh, NGOs, tourism, tourism that uh, people from restaurants, diet shops, and, and other uh, organizations can help us to documenting these events. Uh, we are encouraging people to use the application or if they don't want to use the application, they can send us photo with the data. Uh, they can, we are also encouraging NGOs and other organizations to include sargasso monitoring in the research program because for treat this problem, we really need to know where sargassum is arriving and when sargassum is arriving, because in that way, we can start uh, applying more realistic protocols. Uh, you can share your experience with sargassum, we can tell us uh, that information, and also we encourage students to generate further research because as I told you, this is not only a social problem, this is also ecological problem. So we have to know what is happening in Central America. We saw information of mortality of fauna in other countries, we don't, but we don't know what is happening right now here in our countries. And also uh, we have to include this for all Central America because cooperation and union between Central America is very important to manage this event. Sargasso is not only arriving to Honduras or Costa Rica, it's also arriving to the other countries. So uh, we have to work together to do this. So this is my presentation. I don't know if you have questions until now, or if you want to uh, change experience related with this topic. Thank you so much, Paola. That was very interesting. Um, we learned a lot about sargassum. And like I said at the beginning of the webinar, we have received a lot of sargassum this year. You showed all the photos. We do have a couple of questions, so I'm gonna start reading them, okay? 
So um, a person said that you mentioned sargassum is harvested for fertilizer. Is there a reason why sargassum washing up in the Caribbean is not being used as fertilizer? Uh, in the sargassum sea, the, there are some uh, fishery boats that extract sargassum only for that purpose. Proper. So for a fertilizer and to feed animals. And that, that's why uh, people uh, in the coast start to use it uh, as a fertilizer. But the, the thing is, is the topic of the heavy metals. We don't know if this the content content of heavy met, metals on this algae. So if the content you know, is not so high, we can use it, but we have to know first the quantity because it is a uh, extremely highly quantities of heavy metals. And if we start fertilizing plants with that, uh, it's going to be a problem because all of the heavy metals are going to return to the ocean and start to making a problem. So that is very urgent to do it. Very good. So as a follow-up question, um, so you said they could be fed to animals. Would you advise it? Do you have any knowledge if it can be fed to what type of animals of, or if there are any other uses besides fertilizers to sargas? In Mexico, uh, they have a lot of, lot of uses. They start uh, doing paper and doing shoes. And also they are doing bricks for houses. That is a really a beautiful project because they are, start to building some houses for people that need, they need it. And they use sargasso for this purpose. The problem is uh, we can, we don't know when sargasso is arriving. So if sargasso not arrives, the people are not going to have that material to continue these projects, right? So I think the uses it has to be depending of the country, because as in some people are uh, in some countries, sorry, are more um, organized to do to do all this crafting, and in some countries no. So maybe we have to start studying that and to get um, to get. Um, to give, sorry, I forgot the word, uh, to give ideas how to use it depending the need of the communities on, on, on the coast. Awesome, okay, I have, a, we have a lot of questions. So the okay, other- Okay, perfect. Um, okay, I think you just answered this one. It says, um, which organisms can be fed with sargassum, but you said it depends, right? Because we don't know that much about um, the heavy metals, but uh, I assume they would be terrestrial organisms, right? Like uh, owl yes. or would it be cows or like- Cows, it's most common for cows. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, also there okay. are, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, that's okay. uh, there Go are ahead. some, uh, working on biofuel with sargassum too. So it, is there's a, lo, a, a huge list of uses. Okay. Um, one person also asked if the hydrogen sulfide gas given us by the sargassum is gonna be considered harmful for the animals. But I guess it, it also goes back to yes, but we need more studies about heavy metals, right? Yes, also, um, I, I can give an example of that. There was a case in some French islands in Guadalupe, I think, that there were a lot of cases of inter human intoxication because there, there were a lot of, lot of sargassum and liberates a lot of, uh, of this acid and people have to go to the hospital. So it can, incur in health problems too. Oh, wow, that's yeah. serious. Yeah. All right, okay, let's go to the other one. Would you please review the name of the app? I think you had it in one of your slides. 
Um, yes. If you go back to the slide so people can write it down and just maybe I'm, download it. I I'm know going to take this moment and here, this is the Perfect. app. So you can scan the code and you can download in your in your phone. Awesome. Also, if you need more information, how to use the app or in general information, you can write us. Uh, this is the, um, the email of the lab. And this is my personal email too. So you can write us and we can send us the, the, the protocols. Also, we are going to start a publishing some uh, flyers related to the use of this application. And we are going to start organizing workshops to, to explain how to use it. So I hope we can be in touch with you and with Roatan Marine Park and they can help us to promote these workshops. I'm going to return here and you can scan the... Perfect. All right, somebody else asks, is sargassum increasing because CO2 is increasing in the atmosphere? So. It's one of the hypotheses because sargassum absorbs a lot of CO2. For that reason, it's a really important ecosystem, the sargassum sea, because it helps to maintain that equilibrium. And that, that's maybe why there's a lot of there's more quantity of sargassum, plus the nutrients and the changes of the current. Yeah. There's it, like it, a, a, a gray box, sorry, in your, I don't yes. know if you can close it in your presentation, there's like a gray box covering the. Ah, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. Um, somebody else asked, do you think sargassum can be used for wastewater treatment and management? Um, I heard about some algae that has been used for that, but I think it's the same. We have to know more about the concept of this algae, but if there's no heavy metals, I think yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, somebody else asked. Is there an impact on open ocean navigation from floating sargassum patches? Can you repeat it, please? Is there an impact on open ocean navigation from floating sargassum patches? When the, when the sargassum is alive, it is not a problem in the open sea because it gives a lot of refugee to animals. So I heard people that one of the best experience are diving in that, in the sargassum beds. But um, when it's near to the coastal ecosystem, it's a problem because uh, for that reason that I told you that give it the entrance of light. So in that way, it just can affect. All right. Somebody else asked, are you studying Belize in this? Like, are you including Belize in your studies? We are, we are trying to contact people yeah. from Belize. Yes, so if, if the person that asked gave us information, that would be perfect. They can write us. Okay. Um, and then somebody else asked, could you describe the sargassum wreck events in Central America that were featured on one of the slides, please? So I think they want you to go back to one of your slides where you were talking about the wreck events. Which one? About, I think it was a little bit back there. The other one. This one? No, no, the one where you have the <laughs> okay. map, that's this one, the wreck events. Okay. Yes. Like, I don't know if they, like, if you could explain. Okay, the these are the events. Yes. I think this is the representation of how citizen science works efficiently because all this data comes for that uh, 
for that collaborators. So all this information are from them. And, and we have, uh, as I told you, a data since 2014 and from these three countries. So if someone knows uh, information from Belize, Guatemala, more for Nicaragua, can you contact us? And they can be part of this project too. Awesome. I have someone from Mexico, Enrique Salgado, says that thank you for your presentation. Uh, sometime I would like to share with you my experience. I am working with sarcasm from Mexican Caribbean for the generation of biofuels such as methane. So I think um, maybe put your, your email so that he can write it down and you guys can connect. Yes, perfect. Yes. Uh, we are also creating with the list of collaborators, we have um, a group of uh, in email. So we are sending information about uh, webinars, workshops, and also uh, that the space can, the space can be used to, to exchange um, experience uh, related to these topics. So feel free to write us and to join us. And, and you can be, um, uh, sorry, you can be, I'm sorry for my English because it's really bad, <laughs> but I'm trying. <laughs> I hope you understand most of my presentation. So, <laughs> and so we, in, in this email, you can, you can receive all the, the information related with Sargasso and also about all these project, projects that we are organizing. Awesome, all right. And then one of our last questions, what is meant by the REC event? So when you were talking about the map, what do you mean by REC event? REC event is when the the quantity of sargassum, a huge quantity of sargassum arrives the coast and are in the sand that all the accumulation of sargassum are called like Greg. Oh, interesting. So like when the sargassum is already very dark and in decomposition. Yes. yes. And that is completely, completely a lot of uh, different um, dynamics because there are some people also that are studying the dynamic of fauna when the descomposition of sargassum arrives in a start, sorry. So they uh, are really interesting because uh, there's a lot of fauna associated to them, right? Mm. All right, let me see if we have other questions. They say, thank you for your presentation. Um, your English was good. Thank you. Let me see if we have other questions because we were also streaming live on Facebook. Um, no questions in the on the Facebook. All right. Okay, let me see in the chat. No. All right. Do you want to talk about your podcast? Yes. I'm going to take this moment. Uh, I'm a part of uh, this project that is the Sargasm Podcast. And uh, if you want to, to be more in touch with this topic, we can, you can find us, find us in all these platforms. Uh, you can hear us in Spotify. And if you think that maybe someone can help, can help us and can, or we can interview someone that work with this uh, with this topic that will be amazing. The idea is to start doing more interviews in Central America because more most of the the episodes that we have are more for um, the Caribbean islands, Mexico, Florida. So we are starting to interview people from Central America. And please follow us, and you can hear us in. Two. Awesome. Thank you so much, Paola. Just to wrap it up, I just want to say that in Honduras, because you are Honduran, um, we have started our talks, right? The co-managers of the Marine Park, like from the three islands, uh, just so that people can know. 
So we're still in the first phases, right, of how we're going to manage sargasm, what are, were the plans that we need, right? So what advice do you give Honduras on how to deal with sargasm? Because of all your experience in Costa Rica, what do you think Honduras should do? I think the first step is to organize these different groups because this topic is new and needs a lot of research and is affected different sectors. So one person or one group of person can't work for all these problems. There has to be different groups that are going to be in charge of different topics. For example, here in Costa Rica, uh, we are organizing that, for example, the university are more in charge of the ecological research. Uh, there are people that are more, that are organizing the collecting of sargas and the cleaning of the beaches. And also, if this problem happened in other countries since 2011, it's not grown to copy their information. We can start contacting people from them because they have a lot of, a lot of experience of this and they can give us a recommendation how to uh, deal with this problem. But yes, definitely, I think the first step to, is to organize to organize the work groups. Awesome. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do with sargassum, SETLD, so many things that's been going on. So um, we don't have any more questions and I think we're just gonna wrap it up. Thank you, Paola. This was very interesting. It gave us a lot to think about and a lot of information. So I think a lot of us now, we understand what sarcasm is and all <laughs> its impacts. And we're I going hope. to start yeah, sending um, photos through the app. So thank you so much. Thank you everyone that joined and follow us, the Rotan Marine Park in our social media. So you can check if, when we have other webinars. Bye everyone. Thank you all, bye. Bye.